In this video, we will demonstrate how to conduct a gene knockout experiment in induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs, with help from Invitrogen Neon Next electroporation system. The first step is to design the experiment and order the required reagents via the free Invitrogen True Design Genome Editor software. For today's experiment, select Gene Knockout. Select the species of cells, in this case human, and then search for the gene of interest, in this case C2TA. Next, pick the transcript of the gene you wish to target. You then need to select the type of knockout edit you wish to perform. Today, we will use Frameshift Indels. True Design gives you the option to use pre-designed gRNAs that will target the first exon of a gene, or custom gRNAs that require you to use the gene navigator to select the specific nucleotide site you wish to target. Today, we'll choose pre-designed synthetic gRNAs. Clicking Next initiates True Design's algorithm which will scan the desired edit site region for all proto-spacer adjacent motives, or PAM sequences. It will then rank the recommended gRNAs for performance and specificity, and filter out those with poor off-target prediction. If the site you are targeting lacks PAM for CRISPR, True Design will design talons to target the desired edit site. Clicking the off-target number gives you a list of the possible off-target editing sites. However, just because an off-target is listed, it does not guarantee the edit will occur, especially if your gRNA has a high performance score. Overall, a gRNA with a high score and a low off-target number is ideal. True Design will add green check marks to the top gRNAs it has identified. We recommend trying two or three gRNAs for each new gene target you are editing. Clicking on each gRNA will show you where it lines up with the site of interest, with the PAM site highlighted in the purple box. Simply select the gRNAs you wish to use via the checkboxes. Clicking Next will take you to a summary page of the reagents you will need for your experiment. Simply select or deselect what you need via the checkboxes and use the drop-down menus to choose the amounts. Lastly, the software includes the option to add positive and negative control gRNAs for your experiment. These verified gRNAs are great for optimizing your experiments for a new cell type. For today's experiment, we will need gRNAs, TrueCut Hi-Fi Cas9 protein, GCD primers, positive or negative control gRNAs, and a GCD kit. Click the Download Designs and Protocols button for a summary document of everything needed for your experiment. Then click the Add to Cart button and all selected reagents will be ready for ordering. Once your reagents arrive in the lab, unbox them immediately, and store them according to the package labeling. To start, cells must be properly cultured, counted and seeded to ensure a consistent and healthy cell population is ready for transfection. Healthy iPSCs should be verified for pluripotency and then plated so they are approximately 40 to 85% confluent on the day of the experiment. For this experiment, we will use a 24 well plate that is pre coated with RH Laminin 521. Prior to collecting your iPSCs, prepare your culture plates by adding fresh Stemflex media supplemented with 1x Revita Cell supplement and placing in a 37 degrees C incubator for an hour prior to use. The Revita Cell supplement helps the iPSCs recover from the electroporation process and helps prevent the cells from differentiating. For this experiment, TrueCut Hi-Fi Cas9, gRNAs, Control gRNA, Negative Control gRNA, the Invitrogen Neon Next, Neon Next R buffer, and 10 microliter neon tips are needed. First, your gRNA needs to be resuspended in TE buffer to a concentration of 100 micromoles and stored at minus 20 degrees C. Then, prepare your RMP complexes. For a 24 well plate, we recommend mixing 1.5 microliters of TrueCut Hi-Fi Cas9 with 300 nanograms of each respective gRNA and 6 microliters of resuspension buffer R in a fresh RNAs free microcentrifuge tube. Mix the contents gently and set aside for 10 to 15 minutes at room temperature while you prepare your cells. If you are performing a knock-in, mix 10 picomoles of your DNA donor with your RMP complexes. 
we recommend 200,000 viable cells per reaction for iPSCs. Gently spin down 2 million cells, remove supernatant, and resuspend the pellets in 50 microliters of resuspension buffer R. Mix 5 microliters of cells with the 6 microliters of each RMP complex. The increase in volume will help prevent the bubble formation in the Neon Next pipette tip. The Neon Next electroporation system should now be set up. Add 2 milliliters of electrolytic buffer to the sterile Neon Next tube and insert it into the pipette station. Load your experiment from the Thermo Fisher Transfection Lab or use the quick run function. For iPSCs, we recommend either 1200 volts, 30 milliseconds in one pulse, or 1200 volts, 20 milliseconds, and two pulses. Using the Neon Next pipette and 10 microliter Neon Next tips, gently mix your cell and RMP complex mixture. Load the tip by pipetting slowly to help prevent bubbles from forming. Check the tip carefully for any bubbles. If you see any, gently pipette the solution back into its tube and then load the tip again slowly. If bubbles keep forming, try a new tip. Carefully load the pipette with your loaded tip into the pipette station. Once the Neon Next verifies that there are no errors or bubbles, press the electroporate button. After confirmation of a successful electroporation, carefully remove the pipette from the station and dispense your cells into a well of your pre-warmed plate. Move the vessel in several quick side-to-side -side motions to disperse the cells across the surface of the vessel. Electroporate all samples using a new pipette tip each time. To avoid contamination, do not use tubes more than 12 times. Change the tube and buffer when switching different payload or cell type. At 24 and 72 hours post-transfection, cells should be assessed for toxicity. Key things to look out for include cell stress, death, and contamination. If cells look stressed, refreshing the media can help them to recover. Refeed your stem cells 24 hours post-electroporation and every other day thereafter. Once the cells have been deemed healthy at 72 hours post-transfection, genomic cleavage detection or GCD can be performed to measure editing efficiency for each gRNA tested. First, collect the cells and split the volume. Save one half to be replated in complete culture medium in a new 24 well plate. Spin the other half down and resuspend the cell pellets in the 50 microliter lysis buffer and protein degrader mixture included in the Invitrogen GCD kit. Transfer this to a PCR tube or PCR plate and load into a thermal cycler programmed following the specified parameters in the GCD kit manual. Next, mix an aliquot of cell lysate with forward or reverse GCD primers in a stock concentration of 10 micromoles with a final of 0.3 to 1 micromole for each corresponding gRNA with the included polymerase and load into a thermal cycler. Verify the quality of your PCR product by running a 3 microliter sample of each on a 2% E-gel X-gel or a standard 2% Argarose gel with your choice of DNA staining agent. If a crisp single band of the expected applicant size is observed, as you can see in our gel here, proceed to the next step. If no bands or weak smearing bands are observed, it may be the PCR primers were not optimal for the target region or the PCR parameters need to be optimized. The next step of the GCD process is to denature and reanneal the PCR product DNA complexes to form heterogeneous DNA duplexes. Mix a sample of your amplified PCR product with the included reaction in a separate PCR tube and load into the thermal cycler. After these heterogeneous DNA complexes are formed, the final step is to mix in detection enzyme for the indels. Incubate the tubes at 37 degrees C for one hour on a thermal cycler. Then, immediately run the entire sample on a new 2% Argarose E-gel X-gel or standard 2% Argarose gel with your staining agent of choice. Run a sizing standard, such as a 1kb DNA ladder in parallel. For gels you prepare yourself, use loading buffer without dye to prevent interference with band intensity measurements. As you can see with our gel, we have a strong cleavage for the gRNAs and positive controls, and no cleavage for our negative control gRNAs. 
the presence of the two bands indicates Indel's form when Cas9 was able to successfully cleave the DNA following transfection. The cleavage efficiency for each gRNA can be calculated by measuring the relative proportion of DNA contained in each band using gel analysis software and the calculation formula contained in the GCD kit manual. If no cleavage is observed for your experimental samples, either transfection conditions weren't efficient for the cells, the cell health was compromised during the experiment, or the cell lysis was not complete. After the GCD demonstrates sufficient indel formation, the cells, still in culture, can be isolated or clonally expanded. Collect, then count the cells and resuspend them to a density of 8 cells per microliter in 50 microliters of complete growth medium and transfer to a sterile reservoir. Using a multi-channel pipetta, transfer 100 microliters of the cell suspension into each well of RH laminin 521 coated 96 well tissue culture plates until the desired number of plates is seeded. Make sure to mix cells in between seeding the plates to avoid formation of cell aggregates. In general, we recommend seeding 10 96 well plates to achieve a large number of clones. Single clones can be transferred to 24 well plate for further expansion. Upon cell expansion, small aliquots of cells can be harvested for PCR amplification, followed by Sangha or next generation sequencing for use in further experimentation. Genome editing and clonal isolation of PSCs can be very stressful to the cells, so it's important to characterize and assess the pluripotency status of the edited PSCs. One approach for this is the TACMAN HPSC scorecard panel, which compares the gene expression profile of the sample to a reference set of PSC genomes for over 90 genes. Alternatively, Thermo Fisher Scientific also provides a series of characterization and sequencing services through its custom services team of scientists. These assays include the Pluritest assay to assess the pluripotency, the Karyostat assay to detect genome-wide chromosomal abnormalities such as copy number changes and genomic aberrations, and the Oncomine assay to monitor for genomic variations associated with recognized cancer hotspot mutations. Lastly, Thermo Fisher Scientific can perform Target Enriched Guide Sec, or TEG Sec, an NGS method developed to detect off target cleavage in a genome wide screen. If you're interested in learning more about designing CRISPR gene editing experiments, be sure to check out the other videos in this series and reach out to your local Thermo Fisher technical specialist.